Hi friends, how are you? This is Mrs. Woodbury. Today we will be writing a reading response for this book here, One Green Apple. This is a good lesson to help you build a strong foundation for writing with book clues. Let's go. Today we'll be going over reminders, vocabulary, we'll read the book, we'll see if it's fiction or nonfiction, we'll go over our writing prompt, and then I'll share sentence starters in the reading response rubric with you. Friends, please use the sentence starters to answer the story's writing prompt. Also, please use the reading response rubric to make sure your work is complete and ready to be read by your teacher. This is the reading response rubric. Everyone has one at home, so please use it. Today's vocabulary. The first word is challenge. Challenge means something that feels hard or something to conquer. So if there's something that you're working toward, it might feel like a challenge and you're trying to conquer it. And even if it's hard, you still keep going because you're up for the challenge. Dupata. Dupata is a long scarf for head covering that is usually worn by women in South Asia. These are two examples that I was able to find. Okay, let's read. One Green Apple by Eve Bunting, illustrated by Ted Lewin. This is my second day in the new school in the new country. There are to be no lessons today because we are going somewhere. Other days will not be like this one. Tomorrow, I will go again to the class where I will learn to speak English. Mothers drive us to the start of the orchard where a hay wagon is waiting. We climb on and lean against the bundles of hay. The wagon is pulled by a tractor and we jolt along. I think it odd to have boys and girls sit together. It was not like this in my village. The students know each other, but they don't know me and I don't know them. I can't understand them when they speak and I can't speak to them. Some are friendly, but some look at me coldly and smile cruel smiles. I hear my country mentioned, not fondly. I would prefer to go home. My father has explained to me that we are not always liked here. Our home country and our new one have had difficulties, he says, but it will be good for us here in time. How much time, I wonder. I am different too in other ways. My jeans and t-shirt look like theirs, but my dupata covers my head and shoulders. I have not seen anyone else wearing a dupata, though all the girls and women in my home country do. What do you think, friends? How does Farah feel about her new school? What in the story makes you think that? What do you think? The girl who sits next to me smiles and points to herself. Anna, she says. She points to me. Farah. I nod and say, Farah, which is my name. Then I look across the field where cows graze. I am tight inside myself. Three dogs come and run in front of us. I think they belong here and know the way. I once had a dog called Haddis. We stop at a place where apple trees bunch together. I find out we are to pick the fruit. Old apples have fallen in the grass. The three dogs are eating them. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Their crunches sound like Haddis's. Sounds like she's making a connection. Our teacher gathers us around her. She talks to the class. Then she looks at me in a kind way. One, she says. She touches an apple, then picks it up. One, she says again. I am to take only one, as the other students have done. I nod. I want to say, 
I understand. It's not that I am stupid. It is just that I am lost in this new place. But I don't know how to tell her. Hmm. What do you think, friends? Why does Farah want to tell people that she isn't stupid? Hmm. Why is she feeling that way? What do you think? I pull away from the rest. Beside me is a tree shorter than the others that does not seem to belong. It is small and alone like me. A few hard green apples hang from its branches. I twist one off. It fits perfectly in my hand. Hmm. I have a question. Why does Farrah compare herself to the apple? Hmm. She says it is small and alone like me. Why do you think she says that? We hold our apples and run and slide down a hill. The dogs race ahead. Their ears blow backward, inside out, pink and shiny. At the bottom of the hill is a little crooked house made of wood. I wonder if a cow lives in it or a goat. Perhaps it is the home of a shepherd. In the house is a wooden machine with a metal handle. I see no cow or goat or shepherd. The house is here for some other reason. Our teacher lines us up. One by one, we plop our apples into the machine. I will be last to drop my small green one. My teacher seems about to speak. Then she shrugs and smiles. A boy shouts, hey! He moves toward me as if to stop me from putting in my little green apple, but he is too late. It has already gone. There are blades inside the machine that chop the apples. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. The students begin to push on the handle that presses the chopped up apples. The skin and the pulp stay in the bag while the juice flows through. I hang back, not sure if I should be with the others. Pushing the handle must be hard. They lean against it and grunt. Ugh. I am strong. I can help. I take a step toward them. Oh, it looks like she's being a risk taker now. Anna calls and waves to me to come beside her. A boy makes a place for me on the handle between them. I am pleased. We push and push. It is hard, but we are working together and we can do it. The juice drips down. Drip, drip, drip. Wow. Why does Farah say that she is pleased? Why are her feelings changing? What do you think? Our teacher has brought paper cups. We line up again, fill them and drink. We lick our lips. I think I taste my special apple. Apple cider, Anna says. That must be what we are drinking. I say the word inside myself, where it can't be heard. Apple. The other word is too difficult. Our teacher is speaking. She is holding out a bag for our cups, making signs that we must get ready to leave. Anna sits next to me in the wagon as we ride back. There is a boy on my other side, Jim. He says, <clears throat> Jim, he says, and points at himself. I nod. Jim, I say silently. Hay tickles my arms and makes Anna sneeze. It smells of dry sunshine. Jim pats his stomach and a belch jumps from his throat. Everyone laughs. <laughs> I do too. Laughs sound the same as at home, just the same. So do sneezes and belches 
and lots of things. It is the words that are strange, but soon I will know their words. I will blend with the others the way my apple blended with the cider. I take a deep breath. Hmm, how have Farah's feelings changed? Why do you think they changed? Apple, I say. Anna claps. I smile and smile and smile. Hmm, what do you think? How does Anna show friendship toward Farah? It is my first outside myself word. There will be more. Wow, friends. She's saying apple was the first word she's ever said outside of herself. She is saying there will be more. Okay, friends, that was the story. Now, let's ask ourselves, did we just read a fiction book or nonfiction book? Hmm. Well, there was definitely story talk, and we do have talking characters. Um, and even though we did read a story, we did still learn a life lesson, right? There's something there that we can learn. Hmm. All right, friends, there it is. It's fiction, buddy. It's fiction. It's fiction. <laughs> Okay, up for our writing prompt. What do you think Farah realized in the end? What do you think Farah realized in the end? Let's look at this page here, looking at the pictures and looking at the text. Hmm, you can press pause here if you need to, to read it. Jim pats his stomach and a belch jumps from his throat. Everyone laughs, I do too. Laughs sound the same as at home, hmm. Just the same. So do sneezes and belches and lots of things. Oh, she's saying lots of things sound the same. Just like at home. It is the words that are strange, but soon I will know their words. I will blend with the others the way my apple blended with the cider. I take a deep breath. Hmm, what do you think? What do you think Fav realized in the end? Well, friends, here are your sentence starters. I think Farah realized blank. For example, in the picture, I see blank. Also in the text, Farah said blank. And do you see here, I have quotation marks. This means you're taking it exactly from the text, okay? Also in the text, Farah said blank. What did she say? This tells me blank. Make sure, friends, all of this information, especially that last sentence, supports your first sentence, okay? This makes for a strong reading response. And of course, your reading response rubric should be very close by, okay? Make sure you use it wisely. Check yes if you know you completed and met the expectations. And if not, don't worry about it. Brush it off. Check not yet. Go back and fix it and then try again, all right? Okay, friends, that wraps up this reading response lesson. I am so glad that you came and joined me today. I'll see you next time. Bye.